Hello everybody, my name is Kara, and today I'm here with my spoiler-free review for Lovely War by Julie Berry. So as I said, I will not be doing any spoilers for this book, and I'll just tell you guys up front, um, I absolutely adored this novel. I also want to mention that I buddy read this with my lovely friend Hannah from Snow White Reader. I will of course link her down below. I really really enjoyed getting to talk to her about this book, and I just, I completely fell in love with this book, so hence a review. So this is a historical fiction novel with kind of a mythological twist. So it draws on one, some of the Greek myths, and in particular the one where Aphrodite, uh, she was caught having an affair with Ares, the god of war, when her husband, Hephaestus, actually caught them together in a golden net. And so that's kind of where this book uh, starts off. And in the novel, Aphrodite decides that she is going to tell a story in order to kind of uh, prove her innocence or get her off the hook or basically just communicate why love is important and like why she does the things she does um, and it's sort of like justifying herself but we will see later on that the story has a lot of other effects as well so that's what she does um she ends up telling two intertwined love stories that are set during the first world war and she uses those as kind of an explanation for why why the goddess of love matters you know why what she does is important and especially because Ares and some of the other characters are possibly not sold on that idea um, and this is basically a book about why and how love survives and individual people and their stories and why those things also matter so that's all I'm gonna really say about the synopsis because I think that's all you should really know going in is like the setup and the fact that it's about some individual characters and it's also very much influenced by the Great War like this isn't just a romance story or the love in many different forms is extremely important in this book it's also very much influenced by the time in which it is set and I really really liked that so I'm gonna start off by talking about the writing for this novel. Um, I absolutely loved it. This is the first book I've read by Julie Berry and it will definitely not be the last. Um, I think she has such a beautiful way with words. Her writing is so smooth and lovely and easy to read. Like it's not the kind of descriptive where you just feel like you're reading like pages and pages of like descriptions for things. Um, I know like some people really like that and I can sometimes have a hard time with it but I think she balanced all of the different aspects of the story so so well with her writing. As I said there are some really beautiful passages and lines but it can also be very funny like there was a lot more humor in this book than I was expecting and I think also she's really great at communicating emotions between her characters um, because I think that's another thing that sometimes puts me off really gorgeous writing styles is sometimes they're so pretty that you don't really feel like the characters are real people you know and I didn't get this I didn't get that feeling with this book at all um, so I think the writing is something where pretty much whatever your preference, like if you like something that's easy to read, or if you like something beautiful, if you like something funny, if you like something that really focuses on character interactions and dialogue, I think whatever your preferences are, you're gonna find enough in the writing style of this book to satisfy you. And speaking of the writing, um, I think the way that Julie Berry balanced the narratives or the storylines of this novel was just masterful. Um, so we have kind of the frame story of the Greek gods um, and kind of the reason that the story is getting told is because of them. Um, but then we also have the two different love stories. But woven throughout that are interactions with these characters that are not based on romance, you know, that are based on family or friends or other people that they cross paths with. And on top of that, we also have some really strong elements based on the hardships of that time. So not only the war and trench warfare and just all of the horrible things um, that happened during World War One, but also things like racism and prejudice because one of the main characters, Aubrey, he is a black soldier from the United States and he's in one of the only, I think they called him like colored infantry or something like that. He's in one of the only black regiments and the book is very, very upfront and serious about what he is going through. It never downplays um, the kind of hatred and racism that he has to face. It makes it a very important part of the story while still balancing all of the other elements of the book and I just think that was so impressive that she managed to pull in so many important things from the time period with her own characters and with this really strong frame story as well. And another thing I really loved about this book is the way that you can tell it's being narrated by different gods. Like Aphrodite obviously tells a lot of the story, but you also have Hades tell some parts, you have Ares tell a few parts, um, even Apollo comes in and has some things to say about it, and they put their own spin on the story, um, and I just really liked that. I think she picked the perfect amount of interaction from the gods, because there are some times where you just want to focus on the human characters and what they're doing, um, but then there's sometimes where you're really happy to see the gods like come in and have like a funny observation about the way that humans work and things like that. So I just really enjoyed that aspect of the book as well. Another thing I think this book is great at is the blending of genres. Um, and this is another case where I think I think this is going to appeal to a lot of people, um, whether you like historical fiction or mythological inspired stories or love stories or stories about war and grief. Um, I think there's a lot of things that are going to work for you for a lot of different kinds of readers. And I think if you like what is generally known as literary fiction, 
I think you could still really enjoy this one. And like what initially drew my attention towards it, because I do like historical fiction, um, so that was one thing, but also the mythological twist on it. But I think like the writing, it's something where if you are not a fan of one or two of those things, I think you might still like this book because like it, it blends them so beautifully. I mean, if you have any interest in any of those things I mentioned, I think you're not going to mind the other elements being there, even if they're not your favorite. I also want to talk about the characters. Uh, so I mentioned already the gods and the role they play in the story, and I really enjoyed that. I think Julie Berry had a really hard job to do with like kind of reminding us of the myths and stories that we may be familiar with about them, while also putting her own twist on them and giving them a personality and making them feel like deities, you know, like otherworldly, and some of them don't understand humans as well as others, and I just think that was so beautifully done. I just think the gods were the perfect blend of familiar and alien, human and not human, and I just I really enjoyed all of their interactions and all of the ways that they influenced the story. We also have to talk about Hazel and James and Colette and Aubrey, the four main characters. I adored all of them so much and I felt for all of them so deeply. I mean, from the first time they're introduced, it's like I bought into their character, their relationships, their story, and even especially because um, there's one couple in particular where their relationship develops a little quicker than I normally would like, but it totally worked for me because for one thing it's set during the war and that is something that happens is people move a lot faster in relationships when there's the when there's a threat like war going on um but it was just it was so believable and so beautifully written um like hannah and i were actually talking about that how like we were so instantly sold on this connection between these two characters when it kind of borders on like insta love or at least like instant interest or inst instant romantic attraction um we were both astonished at how believable that was so i think even if you hate insta love you might still be okay with this because that's kind of what happened with me. And I also really love that the minor characters and the supporting characters in this book were equally important. I mean, even if you don't spend as much time with them, so like obviously you don't get their whole um, life story like you do with the four leads, you still get the feeling that they have that whole life story and we're just not being told all of it. And that's what I love in a supporting cast. I mean, there are characters where one of the leads just like crosses paths with them, like maybe they have one or two interactions with this person, and you still get the sense that they have this whole other like inner life that is going on, and I just, I love that. And that really ties into one of the, one of my other favorite things about this book, which is kind of the overarching theme or message, um, and not in a, not in a like, this is the moral of the story kind of way, because that makes it sound really boring and really like hitting you over the head with it, and I don't think it does. But there's kind of this feeling at the center of this novel that I just, adored, and that is the idea that everybody matters, that individuals are important, and that like every person has an important story, and like something I love about this book that doesn't always happen with these kinds of stories, I get the feeling that that like yes Aphrodite deliberately chose these particular people to tell a story about, but she could have chosen anybody, you know, like anybody she could have picked could have been important enough and have a strong enough emotional connection to the reader to carry this story. I hope that made sense. Um, basically what I'm trying to say is like, I loved all of these characters so deeply, and I also got the feeling that they're not the exceptions, you know? Like, it's not like every once in a while a human comes along who is important enough that they could, could be the center of this story. It's like, I think a lot of people are. I think everybody is. And that's just something that I really love reading about. I think that's one of the reasons I tend to really like characters or heroes who are ordinary people, you know? They're not the chosen one, they're just somebody who's like, well, I guess they have to step up and do something. And I just really fell in love with that, the way that this whole book is basically Aphrodite's answer to the other gods asking her, why do you care? You know, like, why do you care about humans? They're, they're so small, their lives are so short, like, they don't, they don't affect us at all. And this is her answer. She's saying, like, why she cares. And this whole book is basically about, in the midst of great suffering, you know, why and how love survives and why people still care about each other, why emotions matter. And I think that's another reason that I really liked this book is because I'm definitely a very emotional reader. And I like stories where feelings are portrayed as being okay, um, even valuable and important, because that's something that is very important to me. I just believe very strongly that love and compassion and all of these, you know, intangible in like the traditional sense, um, all of these things 
they still matter. Like, just because you can't see them doesn't mean they don't affect people and they don't do things and they don't have the potential to cause great change in the world. And that's another one of the reasons I just loved this book. Um, it's a book that really spoke to my heart on a lot of levels. And the last thing I'm gonna say before I wrap up this gush fest of a review is I highly encourage you guys, if you do read this book, um, to read the author's note or like the historical notes at the end. Um, they're a little bit longer than I think historical fiction novels tend to have, but I actually liked that because I really, I really got the feeling that Julie Berry did her research. You know, she she completely immersed herself in this world and this time, and I thought that was so... I think what she wrote there was so powerful. Like, she talks about the characters that she created and the real ones from history that she used in her story, and she also expands a lot more on some of the other uh, series if issues she covers, like the racism against black soldiers during World War One and she connects it to some things that are happening in our present day, which I thought was very impressive and something that I don't see a lot in, all, in like, historical um, author's notes. You know, they don't usually mention parallels to today, and she actually did. She went there. In case you guys can't tell, um, I absolutely fell in love with this book. I think it's a new favorite for me, and I hope that I was able to somewhat coherently express the things I loved about it and the reasons that other people might love it too. It's kind of just turned into me like spewing my feelings about this book. <laughs> so hopefully you got some useful information out of it. But please let me know if you guys have read this book or if you're planning to pick it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!